I'm Karen Laura. This is part two of the other side. Karen Laura CP Life. So after I got accepted to UC Berkeley, I went to the Department of Rehab to get help with the cost of cow. The counselor wanted to test me to see if it was cost material or he wasn't going to help. I told him Cal thought I was cost material. He said he couldn't get into Cal. And I looked at him and said, well, I did. I refused to take his stupid test. He ended up helping me. Academically at Cal, I finally felt like I belonged. I didn't need to fight for accommodations. My professors helped me find note takers and allowed me extra time taking exams since I had to type them. I want to say that I did have some very accommodating teachers in high school too. In the dorms, I was doing more for myself physically and I was going around town by myself. I was becoming more and more independent. It was great. Socially, I made friends with people with disabilities. I was still somewhat subconscious around everybody people, but I had to deal with clerks, cashiers, baristas by myself for the first time. My speech naturally got better since I was talking to all kinds of people and dealing with all kinds of attitudes. I think some bus drivers have the worst attitudes. They would see me at the bus stop, but not pick me up. When they did stop, some were annoyed they had to turn me down, and some people on the bus glared at me for getting on the bus in the first place. I'd ignore them or glare back. Yes, I reported, but it would still happen. I've also dealt with adults and kids asking me questions about my disability, wheelchair, etc. I understand people are curious and rather have them ask questions than be ignorant and I'm glad to give them information. Especially if they're asking for resources for somebody with a disability. But sometimes I don't feel like educating people. What if I don't want to answer disability questions? What if I already answered four disability questions that day? Seriously though, I want people to ask questions. For all I know, it's the first time talking to somebody who has a disability. By answering their questions, hopefully I'm showing them I'm just like them. I just do things differently. Hopefully, this raises their awareness a little and makes them more accepting of people who are different. My biggest pet peeve is people saying to me, Oh, it's so nice to see you out. They mean well, but it's condescending. I don't correct them because I don't want to hurt their feelings. So I smile and say, Oh, I get out a lot. This seems diplomatic. As I got older, my body changed. Nobody told me how CP can change as one ages. I wasn't as mobile because my left hip began to hurt. My mom called Stanford his and they agreed to see me. In o nine they removed the head and neck of the femur. In rehab while learning how to transfer myself with my arms, I lost my arm and hand movement. 
four or five vertebrae were pushing against my spinal column. In 2011, I had a two-day neck surgery at UCSF. They placed a cage around my spinal column and two rods in the back of my neck. I did two weeks of rehab and then eight months of outpatient therapy, but didn't get any movement back. People told me to try harder. But no matter how hard I concentrated and visualized, my right arm wouldn't always move. Losing my arm and hand movement has been a huge change in my life. I'm happy I did as much as I did for myself for as long as I did. I knew there would be a time when I wouldn't be as mobile. I didn't know it would come so soon in my life. But I've accepted it, and I'm always finding different ways to do things every day. I wanted to do these videos to share my experience with CP and a little about how I experience the world. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I might do part 3 about my involvement in disabled sports, especially in wheelchair soccer, and or my job experiences. I hope you check out my poetry videos, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you soon.